everyone, thanks for tuning in to Seeker Plus today. I'm Trace, and this is episode two of three in our new series on holograms. Make sure you subscribe, you get all the episodes. If you didn't listen to the first one, go back, because this one will make more sense if you listen to that one. Today, we're gonna talk about how we got holograms on everything, because now they are everywhere. What are these things called, how they're made, what about moving holograms, and so much more. Let's kick into it. Holograms may be flat, but they contain multitudes, just like me. I had to. That's a bad joke. Anyway. Without rehashing the last episode, printed holograms are light data captured in a flat emulsion that gives the sensation that there is a three-dimensional object trapped in there. It's a trick, but it's a clever trick, and one invention made it possible for them to be everywhere. Most of us are familiar with holograms on our money, potentially, on credit cards, maybe, CD cases, if you're of a certain age, video game boxes. They're usually used to authenticate or prove that something is the real one, right? The original. And that's because holograms are difficult to reproduce. You can't just put them on a copier and get a hologram on the other side, right? They used to be actually difficult to produce as well. In fact, they were difficult to make into the 1970s. According to Sean Johnston's book, Holograms, A Cultural History, they still had problems capturing these holograms. They couldn't easily capture them without laser access, and that was tough to get. And They had problems processing and fixing the hologram into the photographic plate. And even still, the subject matter that they were trying to capture was really boring, and people didn't really care about holograms, even though they were super cool, because what they were capturing was stuff that had to be stationary and small, so things like chess pieces and toy trains. And then a home inventor named Mike Foster found a way to emboss holograms onto nickel shims. It's essentially a flat sheet made of nickel. He found the shims could have an embossed hologram on them, and then you could stamp that into plastic, similar to making a vinyl record. Think of the stamp as having little valleys in it that the light bounces out of. And as you move the hologram, the light is bouncing off different bits, so you're seeing different images. That opened the floodgates for cheap, reproducible holograms that could be used for all sorts of things, on foils, wrapping papers, and games, and clothing, and vinyl records. Collectively, these are called surface relief holograms. They're very common these days. They have low image quality, and essentially they're stamped into PET or PVC plastics. Longtime listeners might remember our plastics episode from a while back. PET is polyester, PVC is polyvinyl chloride, and how they're created is similar to, say, a vinyl record. You take the embossing system, the nickel shim with all of the little ridges of the hologram on it, and you stamp that onto a piece of plastic. Then you cool the plastic and fix it. Good to go. You could actually burn them into plastic as well with a laser, but that's slightly more expensive. And this new invention made holograms the stars of the show. They could be everywhere, made cheaply, and be used for all sorts of things. Again, most people experience them on money and credit cards for authentication because you can't scan them. Once you have this hologram in something like a credit card, you can't just pull all that information back out. Usually because a scanner just has a single source, right? It's just taking a picture of something. You'd need to scan the entirety of that hologram. You'd need to move around to see the whole image, and the scanner's not going to do that. But you can also use these holograms for scientific purposes. For example, you can see changes in a system over time. If I took a hologram of your face when you're a kid versus a hologram of you when you're a teenager, you've changed, and I can see all the little pieces. From a scientific perspective, I could take a hologram of a rock face and see how erosion is happening, or engine part wear, and see what parts of my engine are the weakest. You can store more information in less space, and Mike Foster's invention made that possible for all sorts of different industries. And in fact, holograms are really just exact copies of what's happening in real life. The interesting thing is it stretches so far that if you take a hologram of a magnifying glass magnifying something, you can move and see the magnifying glass work and then not work. Come into focus and come out of focus. Look it up online. Super interesting. The reason it works, by the way, is just it's bent light. So the light bounces through the magnifying glass and is trapped into the photographic plate, but only at certain angles. Really cool. In 1988 in Australia, they started adding holograms to money for the first time. US $100 bills now have holograms in them too. There's a stripe next to Franklin's face and it actually changes from 100 to the Liberty Bell. So if you are a baller and you have a Franklin in your pocket, go ahead and pull it out, see if you can see that. 
But that's not all. Holograms are also used in concerts, like that time Tupac showed up at Coachella, right? Except that he didn't show up at Coachella, and that is not actually a hologram. But before we get into that, I have to tell you about the socks I'm wearing right now. These are so comfortable. They're called Bombas, and they are the most comfortable socks in the history of feet. They have an arch support system that provides extra support where you need it most, and a cushioned footbed that's reinforced for comfort without the added bulkiness. These Bombas feel like a hug around your foot. All of my other socks just don't seem good enough now. Go to bombas.com slash seeker and use the code seeker for 20% off your first order. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash seeker. Offer code seeker. You'll get 20% off and you'll support the show. All right, but back to holograms. Holograms, as we've been talking about them, are physical things, right? They're moving things, you're bending light, there's optics and lasers involved and capturing them into photographic plates and standing waves and interference patterns and all of that. But what about life-size, interactive, real-looking holograms that you see in movies? Where's my droid with the hologram camera on the front, right? We sort of have stuff like that now. I mentioned the Tupac hologram. I'm going to come back to it. Don't worry. But that system is not actually holographic. It's just a projector. The reason it's not a hologram is because it's not capturing lots of information. Your brain just thinks it is. It's a visual trick. The Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan used this same system to look 10 feet tall on stage. It's actually pretty impressive. India's Narendra Modi has done it too, and no comment on the politics of those, but those two really did want to look like giant larger than life figures. I'm not actually surprised by that. And even the news media has dabbled in these holograms. I'm using finger quotes for those listening at home. And these were built the same way as the Tupac hologram in 2012 at Coachella. The first hologram in this way was done in 1862. It was called Pepper's Ghost. To make it, a well-lit actor was placed under a stage and they faced a mirror. The mirror reflected their image onto another reflecting surface on the stage and it looked kind of ghostly. It tricked the audience into thinking that there was a hologram on the stage, but in reality, it was their brain filling in the gaps. This is done a lot these days. You can see it at Disney's Haunted Mansion, the video game Time Traveler by Sega, the arcade game. Maybe you saw that. There are actually a bunch of arcade games that use holograms to make you think that you're flying through space or whatever, but they're really just cleverly placed reflections. They take advantage of the fact that your brain doesn't necessarily know what's going on, so it just assumes that there's a person standing there. Tupac's hologram did exactly that, and it was very similar to what was done in 1862. They projected a reflection onto a piece of glass that reflected onto a screen made of mylar, so it looked like Tupac was standing on the stage next to Snoop, but in reality, it was just a reflection. Do you remember Marvel's Winter Soldier? This technology can be used in a variety of different ways. The SHIELD World Security Council meetings showed reflected people. They were just on tubes of plastic. If you go to amusement parks, sometimes you see projections onto water, smoke screens, all sorts of different things. This is all the same technology. It's the same as the Tupac hologram, but none of them are actually holograms. They're more like 3D telepresence. Companies are using this now to make conference calls a little more bearable, but it's still not the same as a hologram because if you try and go around it, you'll notice they're still two-dimensional. We've had these kind of fake holograms forever. And unfortunately, no one has yet figured out how to make a true moving picture three-dimensional hologram, but people are on it. Researchers at the University of Arizona are using photorefractive polymers. That allows you to rewrite a hologram live, like on a plate in front of you. The plate currently is only 30 centimeters square or about a foot square. It's still flat. It is floating in the air if you, you know, mount it, but it's not actually floating in front of you. It's just inside of a screen. If we want something that floats in front of you, though, we can go down to Brigham Young. They use a bit of cellulose trapped by a tiny air current. Then lasers are used to light up the tiny particle. They're not ready for commercial production yet, and they're very tiny, and they're subject to airflow, like, you know, people breathing and hand gestures. But if you get enough of these together, you can create tiny moving images made essentially of little teeny lit particles. People are working on 3D moving holograms, but at the moment, the best we have is a 1990s rapper 
rapping with his now old friends. If we can figure this out though, we're gonna see R2-D2 and Princess Leia type holograms, holodecks, Blade Runner 2049 giant people advertisements. You know that we're gonna see it. We all will have these. The producer asked me, how close are we to playing hollow chess when I was writing this episode? With augmented reality technology, we can do that now, but in terms of actual holograms, when we can move them around a board, decades, it would seem, but we are on our way. The question you have to ask yourself is, if one day we can make holograms that are so good that we can't tell the difference between them and real life, could someone have already done this with the whole universe? For more on that, you have to come back next week. Thanks for tuning in to Secret Plus today. For the conclusion of this series, subscribe, come back next week. In the meantime, check out other videos on this channel. There's all sorts of great stuff. You can also find my channel too. Just look for Trace Dominguez, and we'll see you next time.